we have Rob Willoughby here with us. He is an engineer of pro prosthetics for Vilex. Um, and go ahead and get started, Rob. All right. So, Mark, I'm in Chicago. I'm sorry if uh, the noise gets too loud, but let's go ahead and do this. So, I'm here to tell you about the finer points of being a biomechanical engineer or just a mechanical engineer in the medical industry. Um, some of the greatest things that have happened in my career is I worked in, for a company in Texas in 2007, and uh, there was a two-year-old child that was born with a club foot. Uh, if you don't know what that is, in this case, basically the foot was upside down and backwards, and the child was having a hard time walking. Um, through the use of prosthetics to correct the structural part of it and some external fixation, we were able to correct this baby's feet in about a six month period. And about four months in, he actually got to where he could try and run. That's pretty breathtaking when you change somebody's life like that. Uh, the second thing was, uh, as my dad was aging and he was approaching 60, he was having severe knee pain. Um, he was having mobility issues. And a company I worked for in Salt Lake City that did knees and hips, put a knee in him. And if you've ever known anyone who had a knee or a hip, uh, it can turn back the time for them, make them more mobile and a great reduction in pain, if not make them pain free. Um, a lot of the challenges of the career are you have different aspects that restrict or challenge you. One is you know, the field and what patients need and those design inputs. The other is uh, governing agencies, whether it's ISO or a registrar that gives you a CE marking or in the US, just plain and simply the FDA. They wanna make sure all these devices are safe and it drives a lot of the cost in medical devices because there are so many things we do, both through product testing and sampling to make sure these products are safe for everybody. Um, a lot of it is challenging. Uh, there, there's never really a dull moment. And as markets grow and change, so do the techniques we use to make them. So uh, a lot of the things that go into this is in design, everything from the raw material, which can be plastic or metal, uh, has to be biocompatible. You can't just put any material in the human body. In fact, there's a very limited few. There's UHMWPE, peak, titanium, and variants of titanium, stainless steel, and cobalt chrome. Um, even those can have allergens that can be problematic for patients. So depending on the application, it can be a real challenge to figure it out. Then the next is in the manufacturing processes. You can't just do anything you want to a part to make it because it could make it toxic or it could be damaging to the patient. So uh, that in itself can be a significant challenge. And then the most important part is all of these medical devices have to be cleaned and then packaged in very special packaging and then sterilized. The most common ways to sterilize them are gamma irradiation and ETO, which is a gas sterilization with special packaging. Um, a joke they like to use at, at a company I used to work for is you can have a shovel full of dirt, throw it in the cleaner so you have clean dirt, you can package it and sterilize it and you have clean sterile dirt. The point of that is it's to show you that there's no contaminants and that you have inert substances that can be utilized. Um, with that said, there are other aspects that play into this. There are machinists and inspectors that also carry these titles, and they're, they're more in making the parts and assuring the quality. Uh, there's people who make long, lucrative careers out of being able to inspect and or test these products to ensure that they're made the correct way every single time. Uh, the best part of this industry is there has always been demand. I've been in this field for 25 years, and I've never not seen a market that would take every engineer they could get. Um, 
especially in the Midwest around the Indiana area. Biomechanical and mechanical engineers in the medical field are in short supply. So that's kind of the abbreviated version of this to those of you that came in have any questions. I guess I, I'll start. Um, and feel free, anyone can unmute themselves um, or write something in the chat, bo chat box. Um, but uh, what is the, what's your favorite part of your job and the hardest part of your job, Rob? I, I would say the hardest part is um, having a requirement or a patient need that is new and or challenging because of the restricted materials you have, meaning, you know, titanium, stainless steel, cobalt, chrome, they're not flexible and you might need a flexible device. Uh, UHMWP and PEAK, most of these biocompatible materials are not real flexible. And sometimes it would be nice if we had those type of materials. Um, I would say the part that I like most, um, I was in aerospace for a little while and to just know how many people that you're contributing to them living a better life on a daily basis and people you meet that have your products, it, it makes for a lot of good conversations and it makes you proud of what you do. Anyone else have any questions? Rob, I came in a little bit late, but um, where do you work? Are you here in Wyoming or are you somewhere else? So right now I'm in Park City. So if you know where Evanston is or the corner of Utah and yep. Wyoming, I, I'm maybe 40 minutes from there. I, I was working in Salt Lake until January and I started with a new company in Park City. So literally I could reach out the window of my new office and, and touch what they call Park City or Vail now. So sure. that's where I'm at. But there are a do, about a dozen to 16 uh, medical device manufacturers in what I'm going to call the Idaho, Wyoming, Utah corridor. It's actually a very uh, strong developing field for manufacturing medical devices in that little corridor. And is this something that you knew that you wanted to kind of mix the medical field and engineering, or is this something that you came into I, later? I, I didn't. When I was at the university, University. I actually worked for a guy named Neil Armstrong. He was working at a company in Salt Lake. We were doing carbon fiber and we were building uh, what most people know today are, are a drone type device. Um, it was fun. I learned a lot. I was doing some consulting on the side for a company in Salt Lake that did medical devices. I helped them start an inspection lab and some material testing uh, applications. And it went full time and I just came to realize very quickly into that consulting opportunity. I just liked the way it made me feel a lot better to be helping people's everyday life improve and their quality of life. Because if you've ever seen somebody with arthritic or trauma or, you know, whatever severe physical or pain element, when you know you're helping them that much, it's, it just makes it, it, it was an easy decision and that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, so. Sounds interesting. Okay. Any other questions? There, there's another cool part of this. I, I don't know if, if it matters for this room, but being able to use the, the CAD software and the machining elements, that's, that's pretty fun too. A lot of today's generation like those drafting and mathematical applications, you know, it's kind of like playing a real high tech video game and we end up with always the newest video cards and processors. So for people that have those aptitudes and like those things, this is, this is a pretty good field. Have you seen like a big change in the technology and stuff you use over the time in this position? Oh, 
<laughs> I, I would say every three or four months where we, the whole industry, it's like a race to develop technology from materials. I mean, we develop raw materials and we change materials to make them vital compatibility. I mean, every day of our life, that's what we're trying to do. And then um, how they respond with functions of the body and understanding that bioscience, both to make it work better and be safer for implantation. I mean, that's what we go to work for every day. So I would say that's all this industry is about is, is one step at a time, but you see improvements yearly that you can look back and say, wow, we didn't think we'd be able to do that a year ago. That's awesome to see it so frequently. Um, yeah. Do you travel a lot um, in this? We field? do, yeah. we do. So, so the demand for travel is both from a training standpoint, meaning surgeons in the OR, as well as, um, you know, the supply chain. Uh, we have to tightly control them for our FDA. And so we work very closely with our suppliers to make sure they do exactly what we tell them to do or not to do, depending on the case. And so uh, it, it's both ways. It's, it's both travel for customers, you know, surgeons and patients to make sure we get it right and then make sure the supply chains are, are doing it exactly as said. Any other questions? We have a couple more minutes left. Well, we thank you, Rob, for coming um, and joining us, especially um, in Chicago and making time out of your day to, to talk to us about this very unique and interesting um, part, of, part of the medical field. Um, we thank you for your time.